At this point, we've talked about vertical reflections, that is, reflecting around the x-axis. And we've also talked about horizontal reflections, and that was reflecting around the y-axis. It's time to introduce one more type of reflection. And this time, we're going to reflect around a line that passes right down the middle between the x and y axes. This is the y equals x line, a very basic linear equation with a slope of 1. When x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3. And so on. The x and y are always the same y equals x. And we actually have a name for the resulting relation when we reflect around the y equals x line. And we call the reflected relation the inverse of the original. For example, if this function was called f in terms of x, then this relation, that is, the f in terms of x reflected around the y equals x line, is called the inverse of f in terms of x. And we can indicate an inverse by putting a little superscript negative 1 right here. This indicates that this relation is the inverse of f in terms of x. Let's do an example. Given g in terms of x, as shown below, sketch, well, we know that that means the inverse of g in terms of x. So, Let's start by drawing our reflection line, y equals x. And again, we know it goes right up the middle between the two axes, y equals x. So when x is 1, y is 1. When x is 2, y is 2. When x is 3, y is 3, and so on. Now, sketch the reflection around this line. Well, we know about the nature of reflecting around a line, and that is that this point here would be reflected right across the reflecting line and end up at an equal distance but on the other side of the reflecting line. So we can move each point and move it the same way, straight across the reflecting line, that is 90 degrees to it, and an equal distance from that line but on the other side. Now truly, this method is great for visualizing a reflection but it's not terribly efficient if you had to sketch the inverse of a function on a test or a worksheet or something, right? It would be kind of tough. You'd have to measure the distances from the reflecting line and then cross the line, making sure you're going perpendicular to it, and then measure that distance on the other side of the line to match up. Sure, it would work. But let's see if there's an easier way to sketch an inverse. Another method for sketching an inverse function is to recognize that when we reflect around y equals x, we're really just swapping the x and y values. Thus, we can identify some points on the original graph, for instance here, 0, 1, and switch that for our inverse, 1, 0. And we can plot it here. And this point here. 1, 2, well, we can switch that to get 2, 1 and plot it right here. And another point, negative 1, 0 switches to get 0, negative 1. And we can plot that here. And what about this point here? Well, we know that if we flip the x and y in this case, we'll end up with the exact same thing as it's right on the reflection line, y equals x. So it doesn't move. And what does that mean? Well, we think about it. We remember this point is an invariant point. It doesn't change with our transformation. So we ended up with four points plotted. And with a general shape, we can plot our inverse relation. So we've looked at two methods for sketching inverses. The first one is great for a rough sketch or visualizing the reflection just heading straight across that line for equal distances. The second one, though, allows us to quickly identify particular points, and in many ways is more efficient for sketching a more accurate inverse. Understanding both methods will enable you to sketch inverses 
with varying degrees of speed and accuracy.